Welcome to Kicking the Local, the podcast all about the football community in South Australia. I'm your host, Johnny Kecko, and today I'm joined by a very special guest to kick off 2023 interviews, and there's none other than Matty Mays. Mate, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Long time listener, first time caller. Yeah, there you go. Looking forward to chatting to you. Everyone knows you on social media. Everyone knows you as Football Australia's uh, media manager. Football South Australia. Sorry. I'm not there yet. So Football South Australia. Yeah. You're getting me nervous, Matt. We, um, we're on location. It's my first time. I've been to many clubs to record. I've been to training grounds, schools, but I've never been to someone's house. Welcome to Dern and Court. <laughs> it is beautiful. It's nice and it's good to chat with you. Got the beer, got the RAA bottle of water there as well. well we've um, got to plug our sponsors, you know, <laughs> football never sleeps. Yeah, I've got the RAA bottle, the Coopers. The only thing we're missing is, ga- is Gatorade. Absolutely. There and will be Coles some. Junior Burger as well. Actually, that would have been a good idea. I drove past a couple on the way here, but yeah. looking forward to chatting to you, Matt. We, obviously, we've got a bit of a relationship. We work together in bro- the broadcast of Football South Australia games, NPL, the State League 1, um, State League 2. It's been a great year, and I'm looking forward to getting a little bit of a deep dive into your story because you know how these mm. interviews go. So I get to know a little bit about I've you. I've never listened before, Johnny. I don't Haven't know. you? No, I've, of course I have. <laughs> of course I have. You well, do a good. You do a, Good work, Johnny. Yeah, thank you, mate. Well, it's good You're to. Welcome. It's a. Uh, it feels a bit weird this interview. I think it's a bit different feel to it. I think um, maybe because it's a bit more form- formal, sitting on a yeah, on a chair. It's relaxed. We, we like to relax in the uh, Dernan Court here. It's, uh, <laughs> just relax. Let's let the good good times roll. You've got a big story. You now in Australia. You're working in football. Yes. Growing up in England, what was that like for you? You're an Arsenal fan. You're obviously wearing your Arsenal shirt of there. Course. Yeah. Well, always have to to wear your old, your colors but yep. what was it like growing up over there in england oh yeah pretty good it's football is just different breed over there it's uh it's it's football or or nothing really it's in your blood it's you know eat drink sleep football um especially you know leaving school um like college is you know down the pub watching football you you just find ways to watch football it's just football 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 yeah that's it playing watching the works like down the park straight after school it's just football 24 7 yeah it's different here now isn't it like trying to get it is to it? it's yeah it's a different culture and um it's probably one of the hardest things to get to grips with living in australia that change of culture it's probably the biggest thing i do miss about living in the UK, uh, getting that football fix, but I've found that by <laughs> engulfing myself in <laughs> in my social and professional life. So um, I, I'm yeah, I'm very privileged to work in football, uh, but I I do miss you know the you know the pub culture, the the going to games in the UK. It's what I really enjoy doing when I whenever I can go back home. I but, say home, home's here now, but you know what I mean. Yeah, well. When you were growing up and being an Arsenal fan, how, how did that come about to being an, is it in your family to, to be an Arsenal fan? Or? Uh, well, yes, and it's funny you should say that. So my without jumping into too much family history, my parents separated before I was born. Um, and then I kind of met up with my dad when I was 12. Um, I managed to kind of track him down. Um, and I, I didn't really assign myself to a team in the early years of my childhood i got to when i was about nine or ten i think i had a dennis burkamp like poster on my wall and i just kind of fell in love with arsenal then but it turns out my dad was a massive arsenal fan and my mum never told me uh so when we started you know having a relationship again then she it was obviously obvious um so I guess it was kind of in my in my blood, <laughs> but um, yeah, that's how that kind of came about. So then, obviously, it would have strengthened the love for the team afterwards. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was good. We didn't actually go to any games together. Tickets were so hard to to come by. Um, but my first ever game watching Arsenal, um, I was actually a ball boy for the club. Wow. Yeah, for a whole season. <laughs> Whole so, season, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I was a um, a junior member for Arsenal. They were called Junior Gunners, yeah. Right? And I got a letter in the you know like your little booklets you get like once a month, the Junior Gunners fanzine or something. And there was an advert in there, and it said, um, "Come and audition or trial to be a, a ball boy or a ball 
girl, yeah. a bull mascot, basically sit by the side of the pitch and you know throw the balls back to the players. I'm like, all right, sure, cool. So I, uh, my dad drove me up to Highbury, and uh, I took part in these bull squad trials. There was about <laughs> 300 kids there, and you know we were put through our paces. You know, like facing the wall. They called your <coughs> number. You turned around. <coughs> Go and chase the boy. It sounds like we're blooming dogs, but you know, um, they even marked you on how smartly you were sitting. Really, your posture, yeah. Um, and then went home, thought nothing of it, and then I came home from school. I'll, I'll never forget this moment. I came home from school, and the the letter was on our mantelpiece. Opened it and it said, "Congratulations, you have been chosen to be a ball boy for Arsenal." That's cool. Um, and this was two thousand and one two season, um, and for the football nuts out there you'll know that we won the double that year and it was the most special year of my life like um i'll never forget waving the champions league flag out in the middle of highbury when the champions league anthem's blaring yeah i get goosebumps just thinking about it that's cool yeah it was pretty amazing pretty amazing and there's actually some footage of me on youtube right we're, we're told not to celebrate and be like neutral, but we we're like four games out from winning the league, right? It's a really tense game. I think we were playing Ipswich Town, and it was like 75th minute or something, still nil nil. Freddie Lundberg slots one past the keeper, and I'm sat in the north bank. The crowd goes absolutely nuts. Thierry Omri and Freddie Lundberg jump into the crowd right where I'm sitting, yeah, and I just go for it. I've got my <laughs> arm around them, jumping around, um, and after the game, my the ball squad supervisor <laughs> locked eyes with me and kind of just gave me a bit of a wink. Um, yeah, we were not really supposed to do that, but hey, if I've got Lundberg hey. and Omri celebrate, you can't well, not. How old were you um, back then? Were you in early uh, teens? So 87, so I would have been 14. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'd never been to a game. First yeah. game ever I went to, we played Leeds at home and we lost. So my first ever Arsenal game, we lost. Um, but we only lost three That's times cool. that year and we won the league. Wow. So, yeah. What an experience. It was pretty special. Uh, looking back on it now, very privileged yeah. to be, to have done that. Yeah. And I just can't believe how rigorous their, their selections are for ball boys over there. It's crazy. Well, I, I guess you have to, you can't just pick, yeah. you know, 25 well, random kids. Like the, there's a bit of responsibility yeah. there. Like you've got to, you know, Make sure the game kind of flows well. Yeah. Um, Maybe they did that in the Australia Cup a few years back. <laughs> Michael Moroni wouldn't have to push the ball boy to get the ball back. Oh, so. that's it. You know? <laughs> yeah, Australia yeah, Cup yeah, final. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> it. Um, no, very, uh, very privileged to have that's cool. been a part of that, yeah. You've um, lived over there. You came to Australia. But in the mid- middle of that, a few years later, when you, I think you were late tw- in the teens, I've heard you yeah. telling me uh, off air about your moving to Holland. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What what brought on that? Because you told me you're. It looks fancy. The the title uh, looks. God, you got to say it posh. Like, oh, yeah, it sounds the, very posh. It says yeah. very po- sounds very posh. Come on. But um, was it au 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 pair? Au pair. Yes. Au pair. I was an au pair. So yes. When I looked at it on the paper, it was A U P A R P A I R. Yeah, it's a European yeah. kind of term. So it. I was trying to work out how to pronounce it. But it's O. Au pair, oh, oh, nice. Oh pair, yeah. So what is that? Because uh, it, yeah. it's you basically go and live in someone's house. Yeah, I was ba- I was a li- basically a, a a a male version of a live-in nanny. Yeah, so to speak. So, um, uh, so long story short, I was uh, working in a summer camp uh, in the USA, upstate New York. I worked there for five years. That's where I met my current wife, Billy. Uh, but before I met Billy, I had another uh, acquaintance, uh, Anita was her name. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we kind of, you know, fell in love, all that stuff. And then we, we did the long, long distance thing for a, a few months. And I was desperate to get over there. So yeah. I, I applied and joined this like agency. And I found a, a family that needed a kind of like a big brother in the house to, you know, do a bit of housework and look after two boys yeah. who were uh, six and three at the time. Just be their big brother, take them to school. So I basically lived in 
their family. You, you get paid like pocket yeah. money, but you get fed, and that's cool. Um, and that was a really um, <clears throat> eye-opening experience. Yeah, I didn't speak Dutch. I learned a little bit while I was there. How do you survive <laughs> like living in the family? Were they did they know a bit of English or? Yeah, yeah. and especially in the in Holland, it's a very strong English speaking country. Yep. But I tried my best to learn bits and pieces. Uh, but the best thing I did there was join a local football team. Yeah. Um, that just kind of opened up my social life there and um, actually made me fall in love with playing football again because I didn't really play football as a kid. I'd never had any um, positive experiences playing football in England. Just with at a school, or did yeah. you try playing for club at school, like yeah, or anywhere? Well, I mean, I as think a kid? it was probably had. I had a couple of pretty you know negative coaches yeah you know um like looking back on it now like the language they used it really does affect your confidence um so i moved to a country where i can't speak the language (laughs) so the abuse just goes straight over my head um but they're football mad in holland and i loved every every moment of it they they really just love to yeah play hard and then drink hard afterwards the drinking culture was unbelievable what level was it there was it hot um no it was social 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 level but you like you worked hard like we and everyone rides their bikes yeah in holland as well so you you're pretty you're super fit you ride to um you ride to training uh you work your your butt off for a couple hours go to the clubhouse drink decent beer ride home um and you just do it you know two three times a week loved it it was great with with being there like when you think about being an au pair the, yeah. that's, that's such a weird name but <laughs> you use that male nanny as well as another oh, like, male nanny yeah but then did you ever think when you looked at the title you're going to be a nanny yeah did they ever turn you off did, was it because i looking at it i would wouldn't yeah. wouldn't be something i wouldn't naturally think no, of doing well, I, i'd um in the uk i work um uh, at a special needs school um I kind of, at that point in time, I was heavily involved in the care industry. Um, the camp I worked at in America was a special needs camp. So I'm a very kind of hands-on, care-orientated person. So it didn't bother me in the slightest. I don't think I'll, I don't know. Everyone's different, but... You, yeah, it's... exactly. And I, um, the summer camp I worked at in the US, I'd never worked in that environment before. There was n- probably a week's training. Um, but you just throw yourself in there and you just get, um, yeah, you just get your hands dirty, literally. But, you know, um, yeah, you just grab the opportunity and you just go for it. And it was the best thing I've ever done. So the summer camp came after or before? That was, was b- uh, well, before and after. Yeah. So I did five summers at the same camp. Okay. Well, what US. was it, the camps for? Looking- so it was 20, yeah, so 24 hours care for uh, children and adults yeah. with, uh, with little or severe disabilities. So it's basically a holiday respite camp for the kids yep. uh, and adults. And it's also a res- respite for ad- uh, their parents as well. They can they just have a rest back at home? Yeah. So it's you know twenty four seven care. You're living in cabins. You're you're sleeping um, in cabins with with our clients. So you're you're basically their parents for two weeks at a time. Um, swimming, arts and crafts, movie nights. Um, yeah, there's athletics, football, baseball, taking trips out. Yeah, it was really fun. So. Was it in your veins to just, you always wanted to keep moving around the countries, like not staying in one spot? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, cold feet, yeah. itching for the next, the next, the next, the next thing. What was that, like, what other places did you do before coming to Australia? What else was there that you had done? Um, was it mainly just the US and Holland? I, I came to Australia actually in 2000 and, 2008. Yeah. I was here for a month because I've got cousins in New South Wales. And <laughs> I stayed in Gosford for uh, three weeks. And um, that was an interesting three weeks. <laughs> God, there's not a lot of going on over in Gosford. Um, looking back on it now, it's quite funny. Um, you know, I took a couple of day trips. Weirdest to spot to, to come to 
Australia, go to Gosford. All that, all that way and stay in Gosford for three weeks, yeah. Um, I went to a couple of Central Coast games. What was that stadium like? Because I got a little yeah. bit of a stupid comment from someone from Central Coast when I posted about Harmar Stadium. Yeah. What did you think going there? Was it nice or was yeah, it... it was nice. Yeah? Yeah. It, it was, you know, empty. But yeah. it was nice. That's and I think, I'm pretty sure the <laughs> bottles was, the ketchup bottles were there. Yeah. Still. Um. Well, yeah, I just remember the palm trees being behind the goal. I'm that's like, yeah, this is scenic. Aus- that's this scenic. is Australia right yeah. here. Yeah. The, so once you came to Australia, and obviously you would just say Gosford, but did, did yeah. you ever want to move back to Australia or was that just didn't give you the taste of it just yet? Uh, well, that was purely holiday because I hadn't, um, I hadn't, didn't have any uh, other like friends or I hadn't met my wife then yeah. until later on. Um, so I liked Australia, but I'd, I'd yeah, it was more of a kind of a just a one-off trip. Yeah, I never thought in a million years I'd live in Australia. How did the, the Australian move come about? Was there ever? Yeah, so I yeah. met uh, Billy. Um, she's born here. Yep, she's yep. Adelaide born and bred. We met in at the summer camp. Yep. Um, over in the US was over it? Over in the yep. US. Yeah. There's a pattern emerging here. Yeah. <laughs> <There's, laughs> um, uh, yep. Yeah. And then we. Did we we didn't mean to, but we did the long distance thing for a year, I think. And you were where in that long distance? You were still there, or she moved? Which no, one? No, no, no. We I was back in the UK, okay. and I was just started university at the time in Northampton, which is where Yankees just signed. Yep. Teddy I did. I did see that you gave him a yeah, um, a cheeky plug for the yep. local fish and chip shop that we went to, the kebab house at three a.m. <laughs> a Millenniums on George Street, I think. They do really good mozzarella sticks. Um, so, yes, we did the long distance thing for a year. Uh, went back to camp and then Billy lived with me in Northampton for three months. Got depressed because Northampton <laughs> isn't the best place in the world and she couldn't really get a job. Yeah. So she came back here. Um, so one of us had to make the move. And my mother-in-law said it was always going to be me. And here I am. Yep. Yeah. Did you have to try and find another... I don't know if we do au, par, au pairs here in Australia, but yeah. did you have to find something like that to get here? Or how, how did well, that... I I've, was halfway through uni at yeah. the time. I've just finished my second year uh, and I was studying edu- was education studies and journalism. So I still wasn't sure what direction of my career I wanted to, to go. So I just kind of, it was a big gamble, big risk to just give up uni mm. and just come to Australia. But I, I saw an opportunity and I just took it. Um, but I just had to start again. Um, my first full-time job here was, um, at the Memorial Hospital in North Adelaide. I yeah. was a, uh, well, I started as a ward assistant and I kind of worked my way up, if you can say that to, I was like the hospital porter, Yep. just pushing beds around, wheeling patients from ward to ward, taking patients to theater, um, which was very repetitive, but I loved meeting new people every day um and i've still got friends that um work there justin davis who metro stars yep who's just retired uh, i met him at the hospital as well we had some good times together there um how'd yeah. you meet him there he works just in, there? just in his scrubs oh, no. just pushing beds around and he worked up in theater at the time and we just got chatting about football i think he's an arsenal fan i'm pretty sure he, he is um i think he was playing at cumberland at the time um and that was probably the first time uh that the mpl or local football came up in conversation That's yeah how i kind of become aware of it so when you moved here like how do you try and settle in because we know you're an arsenal fan eventually you became part of the arsenal fan club in australia yeah, yeah. did did that try and did you join that to try and ease yourself into yeah i i kind of learned my time in holland that the best way to go is just network and yeah. just join clubs. So yeah, I, uh, first thing I did was, you know, jump on Facebook and type in Arsenal Adelaide. And I think there, there was quite a small group at the time and they met up, um, at the Rosemont hotel on Hindley street, yep. which was a bit of a dive Yeah, <laughs> at the time. It was a great atmosphere though. I used to ride my bike all the way into the city just to watch Arsenal at, Two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it was no, stupid, really. No lock was back then. No. No. Those were the days. Mm. Um, and that's how I kind of, yeah, met friends there. And then I kind of ended up 
running the group for a few years, which was unbelievable, which opened up some some doors for me. Yeah. Well, those fan groups, what what are they like being a part of that? Because I've never been a part of those groups. I'm obviously from here in Adelaide. I support Adelaide United, but being away from the team Arsenal, you're, they're over in England. Yep. Supporters over here. The A-League's obviously not like that um yeah. at this point but what's yeah. it like being a fan of a fan group here um yeah. for a club that's on the other side of the world well i guess you're you're kind of everyone's in the same boat you, no one can go to the games yeah everyone has to get up at stupid o'clock to watch um so everyone embraces the you know the early kickoffs early being nine o'clock on a saturday is probably the best you're going to get um so yeah, everyone's kind of in the same boat. But funny thing is, is being the group, say leader, whatever, I kind of helped run the group, but it was probably the closest I've felt to the club ever in my time as being a supporter because you're in pretty much direct contact with the club. Yeah. Um, and whenever I went back to the UK, they, they looked after you because you're only there for a couple of weeks. Is it like run by the club or just affiliated with the club? Yeah, it? it's the, it's it's a it's an official... Arsenal Australia, for example, is an official supporters club. Yep. So it has an AGM every year. Um, there's a few thousand, you know, paid up members. So, you know, 10, 15 years ago, that was the best way to get tickets, right? Now you can just, you know, jump on yeah, online. Twitter and friends of yeah. friends. So, um, but... Yeah, it was good. Opened up doors. Well, that's what I want to get to because now this is what I love about it. So the more I meet up with you and the more people that you see when I'm with you, the more I realize how many people love Arsenal and know you through the Arsenal fan group. Yeah, it's quite sad. But I'm like, I don't regret it at all because, <laughs> no. it, you know, I've got mates that are, that's yeah. How, yeah, it's football. That's what I love about football. Is the, is the community? Yeah, same here, and that's why I love being involved in it. But for you, it's now you're working for Football South Australia. Yeah, and a lot of opportunities come from being involved in Arsenal fan group. So you were telling me before about how there's an opportunity that arose through being a part of this fan group that got you work at Football South Australia. That's kind of how it started. What was the link to it, and how did it come about? Um, so a bit of a football. SA folk hero who, um, who who's not with the federation anymore, but he works at Trinity College up north. John Mundy, he found my phone number on the Arsenal Australia website, I think, and he called me out of the blue in a strong, thick Cockney accent. <laughs> and we started chatting about Arsenal, and I think FFSA at the time were involved with the Lady Reds, yeah, um, and they had the same kind of kit design. It was the same kind of design like Puma. So that kind of... How, yes, it that was, was. That's that, right. That was the kind of the icebreaker. Yeah. Like, oh, the Lady Reds have the same kit. It's awesome. Blah, blah. Uh, so I was like, okay, that's cool. Um, and he was like, oh, we'll meet up for a, a coffee. I think we met at, um, at the Arkabar or the Rosemont to, to watch the game. And I was like, oh, come down for a you know, we'll chat. And uh, at High Marsh at the time. It was first my first visit to High Marsh at the football SA, the old um, offices down there. And um, so John got me involved in the Mini Roos coaching back in the day. So I worked, uh, ran some clinics, you know, in Trinity and Gawler, um, a few schools around Adelaide. And then immediate, the media role came up. Um, and John was like, you've got to go for it, mate. You've got to go for it. I was like, okay, thanks. Very nice to get get a reference. So I was interviewed for for that, um, but I missed out on the role. Um, I thought I smashed the interview. To be fair, I was pretty confident, but uh, just missed out. Um, but um, another role came up within the organisation to be a regional development officer, where I would. Uh, basically travel around regional SA, running clinics, camps, engaging and helping our regional associations grow bigger. And that was Cristiano's role at the time. So I'd never met Cristiano before. And um, so that was that was really good, having Cristiano as this coaching role model. 
Um, so I was kind of heading down the coaching route. And then a year into my role, uh, the then media officer uh, left and there was no one to edit the MPO <laughs> highlights packages. So that's kind of how I started going in on a Monday morning, getting, you know, f- yeah, about seven, eight hours of MPO footage yep. and editing the goals. It was a massive job. It took all day. Back then, well, yeah. how many um, so how many games were they filming back then? Was it, was it all MPO games and all on YouTube at that point? Or was it, no, was uh, it, was it was just one game. One game this was back to... in 20, 2017, I think. Yeah. So one game was That's being right. streamed a week and that was on Facebook and YouTube. The other five games were just recorded. They weren't being streamed at all. So I would get a Dropbox folder or the camera operators would drop their SD card into High Marsh on a Monday morning and <laughs> never get it. The, just the way the process is now to back then, it's just chalk and cheese. Yeah. When you got that role though, what's your ba- what was your background before that with the media? Was there any... You hadn't worked in media before? Oh, well, m- my, degree degree? At, my degree at uni was half education, half journalism. So yeah. I learned how to edit videos at uni. There was a bit of radio work, a um, bit of graphic design. But I pretty much, it was all pretty much kind of experience, hands-on, self-taught mm. work. Um, obviously, my work with Arsenal kind of opened up a few opportunities like i interviewed freddie lungberg when they came to sydney a couple of years ago um which which was really good um so i did a few bits and pieces to help but really it was all kind of the my hands-on experience i just had to take my chance and prove prove what i could do really now you've been there for a long time about five five six years now i think it is yeah. coming into yeah jeez what was it like going into the the place there back then and then now well i didn't know anything really about the federation i didn't really know who they were yeah. all i knew as a kind of an outsider <clears throat> was it was adelaide united yeah i wasn't really aware of this local league um obviously i knew that there was you know training camps yep. and local clubs and stuff, but I didn't really know um, anything about the Federation at all. And it, um, like doing a bit of research <clears throat> before I was interviewed for the role, like that there, there wasn't a huge following on, on online, but it was very infant days. Yeah. Um, Ari Molitor was the, the media manager there at the time. She did a great job. I met her a couple of times. But did you instantly go up to working in the media department full time no no. so i was in the regional uh role for uh, a year or two um and then this media position came about i kind of yeah as i said i started editing the the mpl goals wrap the raa goals wrap um and then an opportunity came up where they said, would you just want to take this on full time? And I'm like, um, yeah. where do I sign, really? <laughs> That's yeah. pretty cool. It was a dream come true to work in football for you. Is, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I, I didn't, in Heinz, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Yeah. Uh, it's a it's a big commitment mm. working in football. Um, I'm not ever going to complain about it. I'm very privileged to yeah. work in football. But the way the... The way the game has developed, the way social media has grown, the the live streaming space, it's um, it's intense. It's full on. It's almost a twenty four hour job at some points, especially when you're running social media now as well. Yeah, you you have to learn how to switch off. Yeah, and it's very hard. I joke to my wife, football doesn't sleep. It's a mm. bit of a joke in the office. Football never sleeps. Even at Christmas, it's it's yeah, it's hard. Your phone's always. Yeah, on, my phone number's on the website. Please don't call me <laughs> unless it's media related. I get voicemails at the weekend saying, "Hey, bro, I, um, uh, I need my registration needs to go go through." And this is like two thirty before kickoff. I'm like, "Sorry, I can't help you." <laughs> um, yeah, I do get funny funny voicemails, but yeah, you're you're right. It's twenty four like a twenty four seven job. Never sleeps. Yeah, um, and it is hard to switch off because. I work, well, I work, my time working when I was in, in radio in an office job there, looking after their promotions team, I was 
even though it's a similar situation, radio never switches off. And it was, yeah. I found it hard to switch off running, put a social media post, having to monitor it. Um, always getting phone calls like you do. What, what do you do to try and manage that as well? And also as a football fan, because when I would listen to radio, it always almost felt like I was always working because I would hear an ad. So that wasn't meant to be then. I message, send an email. Oh yeah. What about you? How do you do it? Because if you do go to football games and s- still working in your head and thinking about things, yeah, <laughs> it's it's I, I can't I can't really explain it, Johnny. I just uh, I guess I love the work that I do. I guess it's part and parcel of the gig. Mm. You kind of have to be on standby. You you know, like. For example, meeting you at Jack Smith Park last year where I can switch off and have a beer um, and Johnny Yule decides to <laughs> ping one in from inside his own half and then I'm like, well, have to capitalize I've, got, <laughs> I've got to tweet this somehow. Sorry, Lewis Moss. Um, uh, but that's the thing. You've just, got I remember to be, that. you've just got to be on the ball. Who was it? it was me, you and Ma- uh, Mark Talbot. Mark, yeah. yeah. I think I was screen recording and Mark was trying to find something. Yeah. You, you were trying to. And then we spent 15 minutes coming up with the best caption. Yeah. Which I what, think what was, you came up with. I think it was, um, you'll never forget it is what or I came up with. You'll, you'll want to watch this. Yeah, that's it. You will Again <laughs> and again. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. we'll spend another 10 minutes trying to work out if it was his birthday or not that night, which it was. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, which was yeah. a special one. But yeah. I want to talk more about um, the media department and what you guys are doing. But this, you've also got a bit of experience in front of the camera, which is something okay. a lot of people that, um, uh, well, most people know about, about it. it. It did a little bit of a round, I think, last year on Twitter. Sorry. Yeah, on Twitter. And when I first, before I came up, um, I think we spoke on the phone once and we, uh, met for the first time in person. I did some research, Matt Mays, to see what you look like. So I knew who I was looking yeah. for in the cafe. And the first thing that popped up was Mr. Matt on YouTube. Right. Okay. Um, so, okay. Mr. Matt, where yeah. <laughs> it's a, a kid's. It sounds, it's, for those that don't know what we're about to talk about, it sounds very strange. It's um, a kid's educational video, isn't it? For football. Yeah. Yeah. So one of my first jobs working in Australia, I was a casual coach for little kickers. Yep who coach preschool kids from like 18 months to four years old. So it's kind of the the group before mini roos and yeah. club football. And I loved it. You could just be, you can just be a big kid, basically. It's all about role playing and colors and numbers. And I was quite a natural at it. And one of the parents said to me like, oh, you've actually you've got a good personality for this. Um, and I'd always wanted to get into the media space so we recorded i say we i recorded a like a pilot um a few years ago four little kickers i filmed in um someone's back garden it was actually one of the doctors that worked at memorial he had two twins who i coached yeah there so we recorded this um i don't know italian meatballs pilot for (laughs) for little kickers and that was kind of my pitch to them to you know sign me up to be their you know digital coach or whatever um that didn't quite work out but during lockdown um was it, when was lockdown two two years ago 2020 so three years now so it's oh, crazy wow. isn't it so i needed something to do obviously i was still you know pumping out content for football sa because digital never sleeps again football never sleeps but i wanted something different to do and we'd always i'd always wanted to do a kids football project yeah. So two friends of mine that have a production company, Gravity Films, uh, Brendan and Simon, um, we were like, screw it, let's just give this a go. So we come up with this character called Mr. Matt. They designed a kit for me. So Mr. Matt, the guy with the orange hat. And we just filmed a bunch of (laughs) backyard ball games. Um, Just, you know, teddy bears picnic, uh, rocket ship, just all these like... um, treasure hunt all these easter egg hunt like how you can um practice your ball skills in the garden and use props around your house yep to keep kids occupied during lockdown so we made a whole bunch of these episodes and we we put them on youtube and we reached out to our you know family friends and the football community that that i know for feedback and people loved it Mm. and the kids loved it um matt mullins uh girls they were glued to it 
like Manny was sending yep. me messages and videos of them watching and um yeah his girls loved it so there was um but unfortunately youtube the youtube like algorithms and it it really like hindered our growth and it was a lot of work for very little return mm. so i think there's something there what's um, the age demographic you were going for the preschool so preschool. yeah like you know two to six i think was our age group yeah you're gonna try and bring it back maybe you know fo- football australia have looked at it and they kind of you know see potential in it yeah um i don't think i ever spoke about it to football sa but i i showed our, te- our td mike cooper <laughs> A couple of weeks ago, he laughed, but he he likes the concept because it just gets kids yeah playing in the garden and having fun. Yeah, have you thought about doing a TikTok, Mister Matt TikTok? We tried TikTok, but I don't know. I'm, I'm still learning how to <laughs> do TikTok. Yeah, so or Instagram. It could, yeah, there's potential there for it. There is potential. It takes a bit of resource, a bit mm. of time. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how we go, but. You know, if anyone out there has kids, mm. yeah, Mr. Matt, Mr. Matt, football fun for kids on YouTube. That's it. We'll be, yeah. this will be on my Instagram page. So it'll definitely be on there. You Thank can you. watch the Mr. Matt. I'll put a, my favorite clip there. What, um, what is your favorite clip? Huh? I can't, it was a while ago I watched oh, it. So yeah, I, mem- I remember yeah, the one, yeah. we, no, I remember the one where you're running, I think you're running through the trees, something I love the, <laughs> I don't know, it was the intro, the intro okay. when you're running around. It's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I we, just remember seeing it. You're singing, I think as well. There are a bit where you're like, oh, we did do a couple. We, yeah, we, <laughs> we did do a couple of nursery rhymes. That's not me singing. I'm miming. Yeah, we actually got a musician to record. Like, um, oh, what was it? Uh, here we go around the. It was to the tune of "Here we go around the mulberry bush," but it was like, um, "Here we go around the football bag." That's football all. bag. <laughs> football bag. Here we go around the football bag. When we're playing football or something <laughs> like that, yeah, yeah. Uh, I love it. I should have rewatched it because it's 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 um it's entertaining, but <laughs> it's good fun. It's yeah. it's cool and it's it's uh, takes you out of your comfort zone as well, doesn't it? Is that something? Oh, you, yeah. You would have thought you would do like putting on that character. Yeah, I I've always kind of wanted to jump into that market, um, like kids TV and stuff like. When I first moved here, I actually had an audition at Channel 10 to be um, uh, one of the presenters on Totally Wild. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know what Totally Wild was at the time. (laughs) Um, That ain't cool. Yeah. So I did like a six-week internship um, at Channel 10, which was, yeah, that was fun. I didn't get the gig, but um, yeah. Good experience, eh? That was my first kind of uh, experience in front of a camera. So you had that experience in front of the camera. You did Mr. Matt which you should go check out um, on YouTube and show your kids, get them to play football. And if yeah. they love it, go out and play um, mini roos. Absolutely. I think that's the, that's my target mm. is the, the pre mini roos group, get them loving the game um, and then feed them into clubs. And then the TV stuff didn't finish there, did it? Because you're still on TV now with the RAA Great sponsor of the uh, RAA Absolute, MPOSA, Absolute Football South Australia. Um, you're now on the RAA <laughs> um, uh, pr- promo ads on TV. If you're watching it and they do local football, they, they cut to a, a local game. You're <laughs> stitch up. <laughs> you're stitched up. <laughs> it is great. I love it. Um, what? Uh, how did that come about? <laughs> Far out. There. And how did you become the centre of it as well? That's what, that's what I want to know. So I get a, I get a, uh, obviously I work closely with the RAA guys. They're really good. They support local football. Thank you, RAA. But get an insurance quote today. Keep on moving on. Um, so they called me and said, hey, we're running a campaign. We'd like to work with, get some footage of a community club, grassroots community club. Can you recommend any clubs? So I was like, well, come and come and film at the mighty Unley Rangers down in um, uh, just off Fullerton Road down there at Unley High School. And I'm like, okay, sure. And can you round up 30 blokes and their families to come out on 6.30 on a Saturday morning? Jeez. I'm like, oh, I can try. We've got a game at 11. Um, and I'm like, that's okay. We'll bring a coffee machine. We'll cook some eggs, bacon. We'll yep. make a morning of it, right? So I was like, okay, sure. So I 
trying to organize your mates to go to the pub is difficult. Trying to mm. organize your mates to go down the park four hours before a game starts just to film some stuff. For, and on a Saturday morning. And on a Saturday yeah. morning, yeah. So I managed to negotiate. We I think we got there at eight. Anyway, so we get kitted up and we filmed a load of stuff. And the 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 bit of footage that they used was, of course, the the bit that I was in taking a a, a rotten touch. Um, so yeah, an absolute stitch up. I, I was not did not want to or wasn't planning on being the bloody poster boy for the RAA campaign. But yeah, bit of stick, and that uh, that TVC aired. On the opening night of The Ashes, Channel 7, oh. <laughs> prime time, my phone went red hot. Jeez. Um, yeah, I think, oh, where, where was it? I was, um, oh, it was Adelaide City, it was the opening game of the MPL last year, and I was at Be Social, and I can't remember who it was, but an MPL player walked past and was like, Maisie, your touch is abs- <laughs> your first touch is absolutely rotten. I'm like, what are you talking about? And then it, and it was like, they are the REA ad, but like, yeah, great, thanks. Have you spoken to REA since? Uh, yeah, I'm still waiting for my bill. <laughs> my bill, yeah. You should be getting. That's actually how um, I think that's why they call me it. the the man picnic that I was a part of with Alex Mullen, Daniel Mullen, Matt Mullen, Alex Sinaski, Joel Allwright. They come up with nicknames. Yep. So they call me Touch Tackle. Yep. I think that's because of the the RAA <clears throat> thing. Stitch up. <laughs> I love it. And I had to bring it up because I needed to know the truth behind it. Are you looking to get into more ads? <laughs> into more no, commercials? No, I'm not. <laughs> You've got a promo uh, rule you can put together now. Your RAA ad, you missed the Matt stuff. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm no? hanging up my boots with the, the TVCs. Talking about the community as well, and you work in Football South Australia at the moment. You know a lot of people in the community, Arsenal Australia has helped that. Nicholas Bucco, another massive Arsenal fan. We just mentioned about him before. I think you did, didn't you? No. For no? the first time, Nick Bucco's there you go. name did not pop up. Um, it was inevitable. <laughs> yeah. I, I've never known someone that has talked about so much. He's yeah. the poster boy of the NPO, isn't well, he? Well, now he Gus was. Williams is. Yes. You got, went over to Arsenal and watched the game with him. Because I, when I interviewed Nicholas Booker, that was a great chat. Every time I chat to Nic- Nicholas is a lot with an interview, we've done it twice. One was an hour. The other mm-hmm. one was over two hours on front page I football. I imagine. That's short. Yeah. <laughs> but the, um, when you went over there, he, he mentioned about that experience going over there. How did that come about? Because he said you organized it. Yeah. You two to go over. I think we others. were friends. We'd, well, I think we watched a couple of games together before... Uh, that trip and it just so happened that we were both in London at the same time well I wasn't in London I was you know uh, Brighton area where my family are but yeah we were both in London at the same time (coughs) and uh, we were both going to the the same game the Newcastle I think we played Newcastle that day and being part of the Arsenal supporters clubs you get kind of looked after right so Alan Sefton um, was the my contact there, Arsenal in the community. He hooked me up with the supporters club liaison officer. So, yeah, we got a um, a little tour of London Colony, the training centre, mm. and then we watched the under-18s play. Um, and because it was match day, the first team weren't training, but we met um, Callum Chambers. He came over and said hello, and we got told off because I had a GoPro in my pocket and I started filming. The security guy bolted over and <laughs> gave us a good telling off. But no, that was good. We're, and since then, um, <clears throat> I watched a few Arsenal games with Buko at his family house, which is good. It's stupid o'clock. <laughs> um, that's good fun. It brings people together, this Arsenal and all the English football, especially, and being here in Australia. It's a great opportunity to try to make friends, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, and not just Arsenal, England as well. Yeah. Yeah. Glenn Clissold, who used to um, be the the um, front and center for the for the Red Army. Yep. Uh, Jason Cavey, mm. um, Tom Rhodes, um, Mark Talbot, and Mark Talbot as well. Yes, I don't well, know. Sorry, I've, I haven't watched a game with with Mark mm. actually. Um, I don't think. Sorry, Mark. If I have, I couldn't remember. 
Um, but we kind of run the England supporters group as well because we've got nothing else to <laughs> we've got nothing else to do. So we kind of set that group up as well. But yeah, that's how that's I kind of uh, became mates with Jason Cavey as well because he was the there was a bit of turf war with the the EPL supporters groups in Adelaide. I found were <laughs> especially between us and Chelsea. Jason will probably laugh at this. There's a bit of beef between. <laughs> Chelsea and everyone. Um, so I never spoke to Jason. I, I despise the Chelsea. <laughs> they're they're okay now. It's, it's good banter. Um, but yeah, that's how me and Jason became yeah became mates. Well, and, for those that don't know, Jason's involved. He was um, yeah. involved with LA. Or he's involved with the Red Army. Um, yeah. Also involved at Metro Stars as well at Metro United. Yeah. So heavily involved in um, in local football. And he's a nice guy as well. Does a fantastic job. And he's a listener of this podcast as well, so he'll be listening. Good. Hello, yeah. Jason. You do a good job. <laughs> now let's get into your role at Football South Australia. You've been working there now for five years. You're in a, a position now where you've got a couple of people underneath you, which is fantastic. You're building a good product. Hmm. The the media team, especially this season, uh, I can be a bit biased, but I'm sure there's a lot of doubters out there from the last few years that are, probably can agree with me now that it's upped its game in the last few years. You guys, especially this year in this lead up, you've got the the the, the perfect um, helpers alongside you to really. Prom- how do you see it from your point of view about how the the media team is going? Yeah. So my motto is do the small things well. Mm. Um, uh, yeah. D- don't push the boat out too much. Just keep things simple. Keep things fresh and engaging. And listen to your audience. Yeah, we <laughs> not that we like do everything that we see on our Twitter timelines, but we kind of float an idea, um, and if people don't like it, we we don't do it. Mm. We we listen to you know complaints and you know the, fed- <laughs> the federation is, isn't <clears throat> isn't perfect. Yeah, um, people are quick to share their opinion negative or, or positive which is you know which is good so we do listen um but i think my goal for this year is to promote more personable more humanistic stories um a bit like what you're doing with your pod which is great um and really like try and sell the emotion of the game because the football will sell itself mm. and if you want to watch football, you can watch, you can watch football anywhere. But I think it's the people and the stories and the humanistic stuff that people really engage with. So I think that's what we're going to try and do this year. With my background, obviously having worked in radio in the past, or still yeah. I'm still in radio, but football is that one game in Australia that's hard to get media on top of. Um, mm. And but when you talk about local football, that's even harder. Mm. Sample. Got it a bit easier in, in South Australia. How do you try and tackle that? It's difficult. Mm. Um, I kind of had this a bit of an e- not an ego, but I was a little bit like, well, I'm going to go in and change the game. I'm going to make you know the MPL as big as the SANFL. And I'm fast learned that that's not going to happen. Mm. Not going to happen overnight. I still think it could happen. Uh, it's going to need, need a lot of research, resource to make it happen because the quality's there. Yeah. Um, um, how, how do you engage the local media? Look, I've I've got some good positive relationships with local media. They're just doing their job, mm. like that. They they have stories that they can pitch to their bosses, and it might not get you know mm. through the, through the through the door. So, so we're going to try and come up with a different kind of strategy this year, as to try and help. Like, all right, well, what content do you want from us? Mm. to help promote the game but mainstream media or not we will do the best we can to promote promote the game it would be hard to try and do because they've got all got their what they're yeah really doing and i like i don't blame them at all mm. like i don't i don't have grudges against they, they, but they just they're just doing their job and there's yeah. some good people out there like you know um rob greenwood who unfortunately kind of moved on from his role in like local reporter. He's doing some fantastic stuff in the digital space for, for News Corp. He, he was a big loss for, for us, but there, there are other people in that like the game that want to do good. Uh, Lucas is now at um, Channel 10. He loves our game. Yeah. 
Um, you got Robbie Cornthwaite as well. Robbie Cornthwaite. Channel 7. Yeah. So we'll get there. We just need to work smarter. Mm. Yeah. Now, the team you work with, I've had one of them on the show before, Hayley Routley. She's with you now uh, in yep. the team. Yep. Jaden Betterman, another guy that um, we've spoken about in the podcast in previous episodes. Um, what's he like? Gets re- he gets re- very upset. Like, <laughs> he'll be very chuffed that he's gotten a mention. Uh, I'm sure has he that. mentioned it to you as well, has he? Yeah, of course. What did he say? <laughs> oh, just some. Um, I think, I, like, I think the Haley episode, for example, I think, I think, it, did his name come up in the Haley episode? I think it did, yeah. Yeah, and he was buzzing off his yeah. tree. The day, so, Jaden's a smart kid, but I don't want to talk too much about him because I don't want him to get pinched from somebody else. Yeah, he, he, it's very lucky to have him because when I worked with him, I didn't realize he was 18. When I, he was 17 at the time. Year 12 he was, yes. he, last year. Yeah. yeah, last year. And he is one of the talent, most talented producers um, or video producers, like, that I've worked with. Yep. Um, and how lucky you have someone like that being able to help the broadcast. Oh, well, it's very, very <laughs> fortunate and lucky. Um, we do that again, I'll, I'll go back to, we work smart and we do the small things well, mm. and it's all about trust. Um, you know, he's got, Jaden's got all these, you know, flash ideas, which are, which are great. And he can, he can pull them off to be fair. And he's just self, self-taught as mm. well uh, so it's uh there's a lot of trust in our team N- not really any micromanaging just go and do your stuff and it's okay to make mistakes it's okay to fail like people obviously you know we, we'll get the odd you know comment on socials and, and stuff if something goes wrong but that's the only way you're going to learn and get better yeah so he's great and he's, he's got a, a big future ahead of him he has do you reckon you'll be able to retain him <laughs> Oh, well, he's got to go through uni first. So Jaden's with us two days a week, but he'll be doing some live streaming stuff on top of that. Mm. Um, we've got Haley full time as well, um, which is was really a big coup for us. Uh, before we finish it all off, Matt, it's uh, back into the routine of asking the questions that I always do to finish off my episodes. Kicking at questions, and I love these. I've missed them actually. It's been a few months since I've uh, done it, but. Who would you love to kick it with on the park? Anyone in the world, if you could. Oh, I wasn't expecting these questions, John. Yeah. <laughs> um, who would I like to kick it with? Uh, it's pretty tough. Uh, probably Dennis Burkamp. Yep. Wh- yeah. What's the reason, Bob? Is there any... Uh, well, it's my, my dad's favourite player for a start, so I'd like to get, you know, say to my dad, oh, I've played football with Dennis Burkamp. <laughs> He's probably, looking back, one of the most technical players I've ever seen yeah. live. Um, and uh, there's a bit of regret there. I'll just do, tell the story very fast. When I was living in Holland, uh, I was cycling to my uh, my game on game day. Yep. And uh, the juniors play in the morning and the seniors play in the afternoon, right? I got to the ground. I was running like five minutes late for my game. I got there. Um, my teammates were like, you're not going to believe this. Dennis Burkamp was here with his son. They left five minutes ago. Oh no. So I was like five minutes from meeting De- like one of my childhood heroes. I was devastated. He lived actually, um, a couple of towns away from where I lived. Yeah. So yeah, gutted. So yeah, I'd love the- to, love to meet and have a kick with Dennis. You can tell him that story as well. Yeah. <laughs> I was running late as well. If only I'd been on time. Yeah. Have you been on time ever since that moment? Oh, I've tried to be <laughs> more punctual. Yeah. Um, now, who would you love to kick it with on a Saturday night uh, and watch some local football with? Um, or not local football, any football, but who would you mm. love? Someone locally, someone internationally. Oh, geez. Or you can choose whatever. Internationally, Arsene Wenger, yep. I think. I just It's very Arsenal related, this this podcast. It's very much, yeah. apologise to all the Tottenham fans out there, Lucas, Ronaldo and co., um, yeah, definitely Arsene, just to pick his brains. He's just sees the game, um, completely different. Um, locally, uh, Bucco and his family are, uh, mm. fun to, to watch. Uh, fun to watch with or fun to watch? Fun to watch, <laughs> fun to watch with, <laughs> sorry. Uh, Bucco yeah. fighting with his brother. Um, oh, who else? Jeez, I don't know. Who likes to have a 
who likes to oh the the man picnic yeah boys i was gonna say the man good. picnic that yeah. would be a little bit disappointed if you didn't mention them yeah no they're good fun with a few beers uh yeah the man picnic boys i think would be the way to go um one thing i've noticed you were on the man picnic for one-off session i've had alex mullen who's a heavy heavy part of the man picnic both of those interviews are the only two interviews i've ever had with a beer in hand so okay well there you great go. well i'm sorry i couldn't offer you uh the peter crouch beer yes i actually gave my last two well, the campbelltown headshots last week yep oh. i gave one to daniel mullen as like a late wedding present and joel all right had the other one so i hope you enjoyed them boys <laughs> well before we do finish it up though that that beer how'd you get a hold of that beer because it's it was unheard of to get it into australia at that time yeah i just i just paid a bit of <laughs> extra money well i, I got I um I pre-ordered it for a start. It was on like a back order. Um and it got shipped to my mum's address and she posted them over. It was yeah, it wasn't cheap. Yep. Um and I was actually lucky that um Adelaide City v Campbelltown last year was rearranged to a Sunday. And that meant that our man picnic got rescheduled, that got delayed, which meant that gave me an extra week or two weeks yep. for the Peter Crouch beers to be imported. So thank you to Paul Pezos and Adelaide City for <laughs> rearranging that game. Otherwise, the the Peter Crouch beers would have been late. And how do you feel when Peter Crouch, you, you posted a photo of yourself drinking the beer and Peter Crouch... Yeah, we it. made a little video. And the that, video that as was well. pretty surreal. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was, that was good. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's all about, you know, marketing, isn't it? F- football doesn't sleep. Absolutely, <laughs> it is. And it's, um, it's fantastic. It, Mate, I've loved talking to you, hearing your story and uh, sharing um, what you do at the cl- uh, yep. at Football South Australia and how you've gotten there as well because not many people probably know that you were an au pair uh, <laughs> in <laughs> Holland. <laughs> you, may, you may regret oh, that now. Yeah. But, um, mate, thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to uh, seeing – well, definitely see you around in the yeah, future, I'll but see seeing what Football South Australia do I might in bump the into you at Service FM Stadium. Yeah, yeah you probably will. Yeah. Thanks so much. Keep up the good work, Johnny. I will. Thank you. And uh, that was Matt Mays from Football South Australia. Make sure you subscribe to Kicking It Local wherever you get your podcasts so you can get a taste of the SA football community. Plus, follow at Kicking It Local SA on Instagram and Twitter so you don't miss any of the action. See you soon.